an Austrian interpretation of the boom-bust cycle. Many historical examples confirm the Mrs. Hayek theory of the business cycle. For example, in the United States, monetary inflation was relatively moder modest throughout the 50s and early 60s, and so was the business cycle. But when monetary inflation picked up its place, its pace and grew much more rapidly in the late 60s and 70s, the result was a much more volatile economy. The expansions were greatly and the contractions, contractions were more severe, just as Mises Hayek would predict. A look at Japan in the 80s and 90s reveals some Austrian insights as well. If the Bank of Japan had adopted the Friedman monetarist rule, increasing the money supply steadily at 3 to 4% a year, the Austrians would have predicted only a mild inflationary buildup and subsequent recession, but the Bank of Japan engaged in an extremely liberal money, liberal money policy in the 80s, expanding the monetary basis by 11% for four straight years and keeping interest rates artificially low. The result was one dramatic economic growth in the late 80s, followed by two, a crash and prolong, prolonged depression in the 90s. The data supports the Mrs. Hayek thesis. In fact, Japanese economist Yoshio Suzuki accepts the Austrian interpretation of his nation's boom-bust cycle. As Hayek teaches us, easy money does not, does not always raise the price of goods and services, but always creates an imbalance in the structure of the economy, particularly in the capital markets. This is exactly what happened in Japan in the 80s. Suzuki, 1994. Suzuki also adds an important footnote. In my 40 years experience as a monetary economist, I have never felt as strongly as I do today the need to bring back the life to, to the essence of Hayek's trade cycle theory. The third example is the boom-bust cycle of the late 90s and early 2000s. What fueled, what fueled the irrational exuberance of the high-tech boom and the stock bubble of the late 90s beyond the genuine technological advances in tech, telecommunications and computers? The Austrians point to the Federal Reserve, which deliberately cut interest rates and injected large amounts of liquidity into the banking system between 1995 and 2000, prompted by the Asian financial crisis in 1997 the Russian economic collapse in 1998 and the year 2K fears of 1999. And the, when, the, when the Y2K disaster was averted, the Fed sopped up liquidity by squeezing the money supply and raising, raising short-term interest rates sharply in 2000. Consequently, the economy came in glute and Wall Street, especially the high-tech dominated Nasdaq, suffered its worst, worst beer market since the Great Depression, lasting three years. The Economist, September uh, 28, 2002 issue, was one of the first to acknowledge that the, that the boom, the Austrian business cycle theory, Long out of fashion seems a plausible explanation of the 2005-2003 boom-bust cycle. Price cycles have been explained by, ex by an exogenous all price shock, policy mistakes or productivi productivity changes, but this, cycle, but this cycle was different. It was an investment-led boom that carried the seeds of its own destruction. The recent business cycles in both America and Japan displayed many Austrian features. Woodall 2002, um, Conform, Callan and Garrison 2003. Following the Economist's co covers um, story, Barry A. A. Eichengreen, Berkeley and Chris Michener, Santa Clara collaborated in writing a working paper, The Great Depression as a Credit Boom gone wrong. The authors adopt a remarkable Austrian interpretation of the 1920s and 2000s and, uh, and the 1990s, 
describing both episodes as an unsustainable asset inflation and securities property technology and a consumer durables caused by easy credit policies during a period of low consumer commodity price inflation. The development of excess threaten economic stability even if there is no sign of inflationary pressure. And in the case of the 1920s and 1990s, the credit boom does contain the seeds of the subsequent crisis. I can agree and Michener 2003. However, the authors do not go so far as to say that the credit boom interpretation of the business cycle is superior, superior to the standard explanations of the Great um, Depression. The role of the international gold standards, the monetary blunders and perverse fiscal policies. To them, it is a useful supplement to these more conventional interpretations, 2003. What is more surprising about their paper is, is that it is written by Keynesians. And this discussant, discussant Michael D. Bordeaux, a monetarist at Rogers, said he was skeptical of the Eigen Green Michener paper. It appears that Keynesians may approve of the Austrian structural model before the monetarists do.